With this video, I want to go over the basic sequence of operation of a high efficiency um, gas fired furnaces, hot surface igniter. So if we look at this picture uh, diagram on our, on our screen right now, you will see that we have quite a few components. Okay, we have our gas line, we have a gas shut off, and here's our gas valve. Okay, after the gas valve, we have our manifold and our burners. Okay, we have our hot surface igniter and our flame sensor. Okay, down here we have our vent blower and our vent pipe. Okay, we have our fan limit control, which is what we have discussed in the past. And we also have our heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is really where the um, heat of the flame is captured so, uh, and is where our heat comes from once our furnace and blower uh, turns on. So let's go over the sequence of operation for the this particular type of furnace. Okay, the first step in this particular piece of opera of, of equipment is the thermostat needs to be calling for heat. Okay? Has to be calling for heat. Once the thermostat calls for heat, which as we see right here, it's going to power up our heat relay coil as well as send power up to our safeties okay you'll notice right here that we have a vent pressure switch okay that vent pressure switch is open right now the reason why that vent pressure switch is open is because if we look at this wiring diagram we have a heat relay here that heat relay coil needs to be energized in order for our contacts on that relay to close Okay, so once that coil gets energized and those contacts close, the vent pressure switch, the vent motor, sorry, the vent motor needs to start spinning. Once the vent motor starts to spin, my vent pressure switch will close. Notice the association when I'm saying this, guys. The vent motor, vent pressure switch okay this motor has to start turning in order for this pressure switch to close okay that is the first part of the sequence of operation for this particular piece of equipment the thermostat has to call for heat once the thermostat is called for heat my heat relay will now close energizing my vent motor which in turn will close my vent pressure switch okay that vent pressure switch would be located inside the vent pipe okay the purpose of the vent pressure switch is to prove a draft in the vent pipe we want to make sure that the vent pipe is not blocked in any way Okay, for example, maybe a bird's nest or a uh, beehive or something like that has may have clogged the outlet part of the vent. Okay, if that was to happen, this vent pressure switch would not be able to close. Okay, it works off of a pressure difference between the vent motor, what the vent motor is creating, and what is being exhausted out of the flue pipe okay so once that happens that vent pressure switch should close okay and I'm going to turn this on okay you will see that the vent pressure switch has the motor has closed and the vent pressure switch has closed so my vent motor is now spinning okay over a period of time we will now energize our ignition module okay as we go back to the other screen you'll see 
that it takes a little bit of time before anything else to happen. The reason why that is is because we want to make sure that the vent pressure switch is closed and we want to make sure that we clear the furnace of any sort of combustible gases that may have been left over from the previous burn. Okay, so you'll notice that the hot surface igniter has now started to glow and we now have ignition. That is the next sequence of operation for this particular operation. Once the vent pressure motor has begun to spin, the vent pressure switch closes, which will now in turn send the signal down to our ignition module. The ignition module now sends the sequence of operation to our flame, um, to our igniters and our gas valve, which in turn will now ignite the gas. So we are now burning. As we begin to heat up, you will see that the furnace starts to warm up. As you can see in our thermometer here, we're up to 92 degrees in our supply ductwork. But notice, our blower has not turned on yet. The reason why that has not turned on yet is because we have the fan limit switch. You will notice that the fan limit switch is still in the open position. Okay, Once the furnace reaches around 130 degrees, maybe 140 degrees, Okay, it depends on the manufacturer of the piece of equipment, but it is pretty standard to be around 130 to 140 degrees where that vent, the uh, fan limit switch will now close. So let's give this a little bit of time and you'll see that the vent pressure switch, the vent motor is still spinning. Our pressure switch is still closed, rollout switch is closed, which is another safety, and our high limit switch is closed again, which is another safety. So in a high um, in a high efficiency furnace, we technically have three safeties that this furnace needs to go through before we can even begin that ignition sequence. Okay, so as you will see now is that that pressure, that fan limit switch has now closed because we are now up to roughly 130 degrees and our blower is now on. So we are now delivering heat to the space. Okay. Once that thermostat is satisfied, and I'm just going to raise the room temperature here just to show you. My main burners have now shut off. Okay, notice what has happened. My vent motor has stopped spinning. My vent pressure switch has now opened. Okay, why is that happening? Because of my thermostat. My thermostat has now opened, which will has now de-energized my coil for my heat relay which in turn shuts off my vent motor. And when that happens, the vent pressure switch opens, which in turn de-energizes the ignition module. But you'll notice that the vent blower is still running. Okay, the reason why the vent blower is still running, even after the call for heat has satisfied, is because we need to get rid of any of the residual heat that might be sitting up here in this uh, heat exchanger, okay? It just adds to the efficiency of the furnace, okay? We want to use as much heat that this furnace has generated to satisfy the space, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise the, the run time just a hair, and you'll see, well, actually, I really don't even have to. You'll see that it's starting to drop. Okay, so probably around 100 degrees maybe, maybe 90, somewhere in there, you will notice that the blower will then shut off. Okay, we do not want to go any lower than that because we can start running into uh, an effect of 
a cold draft coming out of our vents through our supply. We can start running into problems where we're actually using too much uh, gas to really warm the furnace back up on that next call for heat. So there's a couple of reasons why we want to do that. Okay, it's for raising the efficiency. So let's just see how what, at what temperature the blower technically will shut off at. Yeah, about 90 degrees. Okay, so at 90 degrees, my blower has now shut off. Okay, the system is at rest at this point system has satisfied okay once the room temperature starts to drop again well, thermostat closes vent pressure switch closes which will now send the signal to my ignition module my ignition module will now send the signal to my hot surface igniter which we will see start to glow in a second or two Give it a minute. There it goes. Okay. Our service igniter glows red. I will now get my main burners to to light. Okay. Once the main burners are lit, my flame sensor here will send the signal back to the ignition module telling the module that we had a successful light off. The furnace will remain running and heat up until the thermostat uh, satisfies. And again, notice the temperature is starting to rise again. So at approximately 130 degrees, my blower will again turn back on, delivering the heat to the space, and the furnace will remain running until the call for heat is satisfied. And that is the basic sequence of operation for a hot surface igniter gas furnace.